This movie was very odd, but also kind of entertaining. It was full of Disney stars and other stars and all kinds of shit. The musical teacher or whatever, he's been in some decently popular stuff. And his dad has also been in a, some popular stuff. And then, of course, the main character was obviously Austin from Austin and Alley. And Kim from Kicking It. She was also in some other Disney Channel original movie, Girl vs. Monster, I think. Which is something I watched that I will be rewatching, hopefully, in time for, like, a Halloween upload. Um, and Invisible Sister. I want to watch that, too. But, um, they also have the dude that played Blob. Uncle Blobbin in The Thundermans as his best friend, who is kind of creepy, but they try and make him, like, you know, a sad, relatable character. Um, but they have a line about how he thought this birthday party was cool, at least from when he was looking outside her window, and that's, like, a legitimate line. They already made him, like, this social media dude that's always on social media. So they simply could have had him say something like, you know, her birthday party was cool from what I saw on Instagram or something like that. But no, he, he was just fucking watching her outside her window on her sweet 16 and that's supposed to be a relatable character. They also kind of have like pedophilia shit and I guess that's supposed to be funny, like it's not legitimately pedophilia, but it is kind of weird. Like, um, the mom, he, he, um, he says he wants her parents to love him, which for some reason, funny joke, her mom legitimately falls in love with him and tries to have sex with him. And even the scene ends by her asking for nudes and, you know, he's obviously underage. So that was fucking kind of weird, but I guess it was supposed to be funny. I guess I can kind of see the humor, but it was very weird. Why didn't the dad also fall in love with him? Also, it never, it, it kind of sucked things literally, but at the same time didn't. Because when he wishes for a car, he wishes for the car to come and his dad to come. And he ends the sentence with sick, but his dad doesn't like come there sick. But, yeah, she legitimately falls in love with him. Kind of weird. And, of course, when he goes to actually get the phone, the dude's, like, touching his face and shit and talking about how cute he is. At one point, he even says, like, boy, you're cute, but you're dumb. This dude's a high schooler. He didn't ever actually say his age. I mean, he is a senior, so he could be 18. But that doesn't make it any less creepy if he was... Barely legal. It just makes it creepy still, you know? Um, they also have the dude that was in um, Wizards of Waverly Place as Alex's boyfriend. That I really didn't like in that show. He's a complete dick in this movie and they make you feel bad for him. There's a scene where he fucking trips a dude with his hockey stick that was skateboarding, which was his friend. Which was Austin's friend or whatever. The dude that plays um, Austin and Austin Alley. I think his name. I don't even remember his name in this movie. It's Kyle. Kyle. That's a weird name. Um, for our main character. So Kyle's friend gets tripped with a hockey stick by Derek. And Derek's only explanation is like. Well I, I can't help that he's fat. And he's not good at skateboarding. So then he uses the app to make him bad at skateboarding and he collides with a dumpster or whatever. Well, that dude was a, clearly a dick. He just tripped someone with a hockey stick while they were skateboarding. Could have seriously hurt him. Because he was fat was his reasoning. Might not have been his actual reason, but that's what he said. But later they're like, oh, he lost his girlfriend. Nobody's friends with him anymore. So then he, he's like, well, I don't want to be a hockey player anyway, so I'll get you 
back to being popular and stuff. So, he gets him popular again. The movie actually ends with like a very brief scene of him with his hand around the girl that left him. She left him immediately once he was not good at hockey anymore. And she started dating the dude that replaced him. But he goes back to her? Okay. That makes total sense. Um, that's not weird at all. They also, surprisingly enough, have a gay character that's the bad guy. Which usually isn't the case. They're usually just there for comedic relief, but... He was there, he was kind of funny and likable in his first scene. And then after that, he's just like a complete dick through the rest of the movie. He makes a joke about a guy not having his balls drop because he sang opera. And then he tries to fight the same dude later and gets his ass kicked. He spies on people in the locker room. And then near the end of the movie... Um... Even though, like, they've already established that he's gay. Um, Austin's character is... Ross Lynch's character, because that's his real name. It's just kind of like, you're gay and that's okay. So he, like, hugs him and then tries to kiss him. And it's, it's just really fucking dumb. They, earlier they had said like he was 37% gay or whatever. So I thought it was kind of like biphobia or something. But nope. It's just like him being like internalized homophobic or whatever. He has internalized homophobia. They really did not portray that well. I I don't I don't know what they were doing with his character. But it was... Pretty dumb. I liked him in his first scene. He tries to den deny the fact that he's wearing women jeans. And then when she pushes him on the matter. It's kind of like there was a sale. And I just kind of blacked out and bought a bunch of clothes. It was a pretty funny scene. And he just kind of walks off. And like I think he flicks him off. I liked that interaction. I liked him in that scene. And after that, he's just a fucking dick throughout the movie. <laughs> and then there's like just a random scene of him punching Ross. He tries to be like, oh yeah, he has this app on his phone. He's, he's not what you guys think. Of course, nobody believes him. He gets like kicked off the stage. Ross ends up trying to say the exact same thing. Nobody believes him either. Then he just kind of leaves, and when he's leaving, he gets punched in the face. That really doesn't even go anywhere. His dad also wants to say goodbye to him or whatever. Because his dad is kind of a piece of shit throughout the movie. He's unemployed. He didn't even want to see his son, but... You know, the mom didn't want to break his heart, so she had pretended that... Them moving was the reason she, she, he didn't get to see him but yeah he decides to leave and he doesn't even say goodbye to his daughter it's clearly you know the typical oh the main character is the only one that matters but when you think about it it's pretty fucking crazy he like calls his son over there to say goodbye to him when his daughter's right there speaking of the daughter she's barely in this movie she's in a handful of scenes i didn't really care for her character because she really didn't have much characterization but she's played by the girl that was in the disney show bella and the bulldogs and she also played fucking star girl though so it's cool to see her in this movie but kind of weird and she really doesn't do much she's just kind of there he also has a very interesting bedroom that they have her like sneak out of because she wants to go see her boyfriend or whatever. So he has a bedroom, right? And it's very, very small. But it also has a door for him to be able to just walk outside. 
So she goes in there, looks out the window to see if her boyfriend's there, and then opens the door and then just walks outside. She just walked outside from his bedroom. That is very interesting and kind of cool. Can you imagine just going to your bedroom and being able to just chill out and then just being able to just go straight outside from your bedroom? Very interesting. But yeah, that's really about it.